Okay, we've talked about the Red Balloon, 1956, White Mane, 1953, Circus Angel, 1965. Let's circle back now in the Albert Lamoury's filmography to 1960 and talk about Stowaway in the Sky. Uh, it was hailed by some as uh, sort of a sequel to The Red Balloon. It's a feature-length film, um, but it's not really a sequel. Uh, both of them star his son, Pascal Amaris. Both of them have a, a balloon figuring in the central role in the plot. Uh, but that's where the similarity sort of ends, except that they're both very meditative and uh, just sort of these odes to childhood and growing up, like many of his films are, but it's not a direct sequel by any means. The film is notable for its use of heliovision very extensively. Uh, heliovision used in Circus Angel in the point of view flying shots of the angel in that film. Now Lamaris has an entire balloon voyage across France to play with this technique. And uh, Heliovision sort of think, think drone footage today, what you would use that for. He had a, an early method of getting that sort of effect by mounting a camera on a platform that he stabilized uh, through his own you know, experimentation on a helicopter and got some very beautiful, smooth footage that wasn't really possible before. So Lamaris, of course, uh, an inventor, invented the board game Risk and uh, an innovator here with Heliovision. And just a, a really wonderful sort of uh, analog in his day to someone like George Lucas, who, if he didn't have what he needed to create his vision, he invented it, he created it, and he went out and did it. But Stowaway in the Sky, what to say about it? We're going to circle back and do a review, but uh, I wanted to share it with you on some real level, because if you're watching my channel, you might be interested in Albert Lamaris, one, and you might be an English speaker, two, and there's no English speaking version, no dubbed version of this film that I could find, or even in research, but physically find and watch. And there are no English subtitles that I could find and watch. If you speak English and you want to experience this film the way it was released in France, uh, purely just in that pure experience between the director and the audience, you couldn't do it. If you speak Spanish, there's a, a Spanish version, maybe one or two Spanish versions that I could find. There's a DVD that was released with French and Spanish and some other dialect uh, versions dubbed um, of several of his films in a compendium of his films, but none of them are English. In English, you can find sort of a, a children's treasury sort of edition. But it, it's not the film, and, and let me tell you why. Jack Lemmon, the actor, saw this movie when it was released. He was a fan of Albert Lamaris's, probably from The Red Balloon, and brought it over to America. Great. But he couldn't resist messing with it. He was at the height of his popularity and maybe felt he was doing a great thing and could do no wrong, but he hired someone to write narration. Now, where have we heard this before? The famous narration story uh, for Blade Runner, right? Added little details and quirks to the characters and little backstory things that didn't exist in the original film. And I don't know why Albert Lamaris allowed that to happen. Uh, maybe he, you know, was flattered that someone like Jack Lemmon was uh, paying attention to this film. Maybe he thought it would uh, bring greater things down the road. Who knows? I don't know. But it happened. And now, because of that, the only English version of the film is the Jack Lemmon talkie talky narration version. And he, it, through the narration, invents 
you know, his backstory. He is speaking as Pascal Emerys, as the boy in the film, now grown up, remembering this adventure with his granddad in a balloon over France. And we're supposed to believe Jack Lemmon is this little French boy. And <laughs> it's, it's sort of ridiculous. It's well-intentioned, but it's it ruins the intent of the film. It just ruins the film, the experience of watching the film. And I've watched the film in French, tried to follow along, but like I said, there are no English subtitles. So I thought, isn't narration something that generally is targeted for those quiet moments in a film? And isn't there generally just the background music and sound effects playing when a narrator starts to speak? I had a very good DVD copy of the film, of the visual aspect of the film, and while the VHS copy of the American version was almost unwatchable, because it's a degraded old tape that almost breaks every time I put it in, but the sound was very good. And VHS sound has always been very good. And couldn't you lay the video of one, the DVD, which is worlds better than the VHS degraded copy that I have of the English version, uh, lay the English version beneath it and then fade between them. Whenever Jack Lemmon starts to speak in the English version, fade to the French version, which at that point is just music. And come up with a version that is as close as possible to what people in their native language would would be seeing when it was released. If you spoke French, you didn't hear Jack Lemmon going on about this fictitious grandfather voyage that he had. Um, and if you speak Spanish, you heard Spanish actors dubbing the film. Could you get rid of Jack Lemmon by doing that sort of smooth transition of the soundtrack. And I had my doubts. But finally, I said, well, why not? Let's try it. Spent a week syncing them up, trying to find the exact rate of the tape wander um, to the digital copy. And I found it, and I synced them up perfectly, and I faded between, did a few shots every day. And it worked. And I have it. And I to my knowledge, have the only English language dub of this notable film in existence without Jack Lemmon. That's as close as possible to what Albert Lamarice intended us to experience watching the film in our own language. Of course, as close as possible, he expected me to be French watching the film if I wanted to see that version, but I couldn't do that. And so the best I could do is experience it directly with the English actors. But getting rid of the sort of nonsensical Jack Lemmon material and the little details and quirks and jokes that he makes that are just detracting and take away from the meditation of floating over the Alps, not a thousand feet over the Alps, but maybe a hundred feet over the Alps. Uh, of following a flock of birds, oh, above a flock of birds, and then singling out one flamingo, I think, and then following it for a minute or two, silently. Things that you don't see every day. Certainly you didn't see them in the 60s, this steady with this sort of footage. And as this little boy is traveling on his, his own journey of, of growing up, sort of feeling what he's feeling as he goes along. And it's quite wonderful, and it's worth having and worth seeing. And I wanted to bring it to you, and I wanted to share it with you. And I figured, well, it'll get dinged for copyright if I upload it, but uh, let me upload it to YouTube anyway and see how we do. And YouTube did its thing with processing it, and it looked great, and it sounded great. And I expected it to get a copyright claim because I don't own it. And I did try to find who owned it. And Montsouris Film Company, the original, I can't find 
really in existence anymore. And uh, the various versions of, of it on different DVDs are scattered to the four winds and it's hard to know who has any relation to this movie anymore. So I figured it might get dinged for copyright, but the way copyright claims work on YouTube these days is you can still show it. You just can't monetize it. And that's fine with me. I'm not monetized anyway. And if I ever am, I'm fine with whoever owns the film getting the money. Uh, so win-win, let's do it. And I uploaded it and it got blocked. Not claimed, blocked. And I said, well, that's interesting. It's disappointing, but it's interesting. Who blocked it? Because you can't block it if you don't own it. Or so I thought. And I looked further down into the details and it didn't get blocked as a movie. It got blocked for the music. Sony Music owns the soundtrack to this film. And they blocked it in all territories. Not a claim, a block. So you can't watch it. And I can't share it. And if you've ever heard other YouTubers opine about their experiences with Sony Music, you know that it's a lost cause. You don't step on that tiger's tail. You don't negotiate. You only stir the pot and stir up a hornet's nest and... Uh, make things worse, perhaps, for yourself. So if they block it, it's gone, it's blocked. So I'm sorry. And I just wanted to come on here and say, I tried, I tried to share this beautiful film with uh, the audience here, who's, I figure, uh, largely English speaking and uh, largely interested in Albert Lamarise to some degree anyway, and uh, might be interested in, in having access to this in their own language without the Jack Lemon stuff sort of spoiling the fun. And I couldn't get it to you. So I apologize. And I don't know if it'll ever be okay to show it to anyone. I'm, to my knowledge, the only one who has an English dub of this film with decent video and good audio in English without Jack Lemon in existence, if it ever existed at all. Maybe it existed at some point, and maybe Pascal Lamarice or his estate has it somewhere, but uh, I can't find hide nor hair of it. And I can't find who owns anything to do with the actual film of uh, Stowaway in the Sky, only the music, and Sony Music has the power to block it completely from being shown. So, And it's a shame, because it's a notable film from a notable filmmaker, and uh, it should be seen. Uh, and it's fading into history. It's hard to find any version of Stowaway in the Sky, any version at all, very difficult. And the fact that it's not available in English, really, in that original cut is sad. And uh, so I wanted to rectify that and I couldn't do it. I could do it, I just can't share it. So I apologize. If it becomes possible, I'll find a way. But uh, I don't think it's possible, not at the moment. So there's my tale of woe about Stowaway in the Sky and spending a week syncing up different versions of it so that you could see it in its original glory in English. Um, and it's a no-go. We will circle back and do a review of the film as we uh, tend to on this channel. Uh, and I'll be careful not to play any of the music because the, those seem to be the only rights pertaining to this film that anyone cares about. And I don't want the review to get blocked. So watch for that. It'll be coming out hopefully within a week or so of this video. Um, so that's my intention. Uh, I hope you'll tune in and, and join me for that. And in the meantime, I hope you'll try to find a, some version of Stowaway in the Sky and try to imagine it. If you're watching the English version, try to imagine it without Jack Lemmon, uh, spoiling the more meditative, beautiful passages of the film where it's just you and what the camera's seeing. It, it's worthwhile doing, I think, and uh, especially if you're a Lamarie's fan. 
So, okay, I've rambled long enough. Thank you for watching. Sorry I couldn't share this film with you directly in some way, and uh, we'll be doing our review in the next few days. Until then, take care, and we'll see you soon.